Hi guys. Camera's handheld at the moment so it'll be a bit shaky but I want to try and scan across a few things to talk about what we're going to do. In one of my previous videos I managed to burn out this little receiver. Uh, was it 27 megahertz receiver? When I say burn out it's just that chip there There's a pointy stick, right? That one just there, which I'm confident is the H bridge controlling the steering motor. I think those chips there are the H bridge controlling the drive motor, and they're individual power transistors I'll call them at the moment whereas that one I think did the steering motor and wasn't intended to carry quite so much power and I don't know if the camera will get in close enough but there's a little bubble knocked out of it there where it's overheated so the actual chip there is the RX2 chip the receiver chip that does all the um, encoding or decoding and I've got a circuit diagram there or whatever you want to call it of a typical RX2 chip it's got um, 16 pins and what we're interested in are pin 6 and 7 is left and right and pin 10 and 11 are forwards and backwards. So those are the, the two outputs for the steering and the two outputs for the drive. Now I'm hoping, as I say, that we're only interested in the steering here. Now on eBay I spotted this thing, which is an H-bridge, sort of thing you use on Arduino projects. And it has in one, in two for motor A and in three, in four for motor B. So that would be, um, or could be, your steering motor and your drive motor. So being as I think I've only burnt out the steering mo motor controller there, I'll only need half of this, but I need to try and intercept this is where we're going to get problems. Pin 6 and 7, which would come to the H bridge there. I need to intercept that where it comes out and feed that into 1 and 2 there. On the face of it I can put virtually any voltage I like there within the um, restrictions of what this one can carry. I think on the advert it said up to 10 volts. So I can use a different battery to power my steering if I want to or my drive motor if I want to. So thinking ahead a few um, episodes I could do this to drive a significantly larger motor than this receiver's designed to drive. So this one can keep the... Um, what was I running? Oh, I must have been running it on 3.7 volts, I should think. A 1S LiPo. But I could potentially run the motors off a 2S LiPo without burning out the receiver if you follow where we're going with this. Anyway, enough waffle. What I've got to try and do is desolder that chip, get it off the board, and then run some wires from pin 6 and 7, which is... <laughs> Can we get in close? That one and that one. And fly them across to this board just to see if we can make it work. 
we can make it work, then we can move on to something else. So I've desoldered that chip that was there. Now I've got to pick up that and those two tracks there. Got a problem. The wire I'm using to attach to the circuit board uh, is just a single conductor and it's a bit strong compared to the track on the circuit board. So it's tending to lift the copper track off the circuit board. So I've made the connection, but if I allow this to wobble around a bit, it will just pull the track. Um, straight up, so I might have to put a bit of hot glue on there or something just to hold it down all up together Sort of it's all spread out so we can see what's going on That's the original receiver board That's the H bridge that controlled or powered the steering motor so I've taken that off intercepted the left and right um, tags off the receiver chip. They come out here and go to this external H bridge. I'm only using half of it. That's powered by a 2S LiPo and in fact I've wired it up to the drive motor rather than the steering motor simply because I've got the steering motor disconnected at the moment so it's easier just to connect it to the drive motor but if I use my left right we're running the motor and we're actually running it off a 2S LiPo so that might be a bit difficult to follow what I've done there because I've sort of done it backwards by using the drive motor instead of the steering motor. Those green wires are the steering motor. They still go to the board, but because there's no chip on there, they go nowhere at the moment. So that's a success. It needs tidying up, but I'm quite pleased with that. So that's a H bridge off eBay. I'll put the details in the video description. It was actually cheaper to buy that, I think that was 99 pence, than it would have been to buy individual chips or power transistors to try and replace that. And it gives me the advantage of I got an external power supply. When I say external, a different battery. So receivers running off three and a half volts or 3.7 volts or four volts whereas the motor is now running off a uh, seven and a half volts or 8.4 volts for people who like to say what they are when they're fully charged and it works Plug that battery just to show it is running off there. So, there we go, that's a potential way of upgrading your cheap radio control receivers to take more power.